In the last stream, we were working on setting up the Tinker's Construct smeltery here. The idea being that we were initially going to use this as our source of resource automation. We were going to take all of our raw metal chunks from the builder that we have in the mining dimension, send them all around through to the smeltery, and then automatically have the smeltery turn all of those resources into ingots. Now, the problem that we ran into is that the smeltery produces alloys if you put certain metals in at the same time. So if we were to put both copper and tin in the smeltery, and they were both in their liquid form in the smeltery's internal tank here, they would combine and create bronze, which is not what we want. We want to have the ability to make bronze if we want it, but in general, we want to have both copper and tin in their independent forms in our storage drawer system. There are two ways around this. The first way is to make multiple smelteries, basically having uh, different smelteries all containing only the resources that don't melt together. So we put iron and uranium in this one, iron and uranium don't combine, so we can pump as much of both of those into here and that would work. However, that is going to be a little tedious and it's going to be much more difficult to set up. And thankfully, in the new versions of Tinker's Construct, we do have access to the Foundry, which is a brand new multi-block structure that is just like the smeltery with the one added bonus that it cannot make alloys. Now, in the last stream, we were looking at the recipe for the scorched brick, which is kind of the equivalent to seared brick with the regular smeltery. And it looked a little expensive because in order to make scorched bricks, you require scorched brick. And the scorched brick is made by smelting nether grout. And the nether grout is made with gravel, soul sand, and magma creams, with the magma creams in particular being a little tricky for us to get in large quantities. However, the YouTube comments have informed me that there is actually a much easier way to get scorched brick, and that is via scorched stone, which we can make by pouring magma over gravel using our Tinker smeltery. And the magma we can get by simply putting magma blocks directly into the smeltery. And as luck would have it, we do have easy access to the nether, and the nether is chock full of magma blocks. And so really, all we should have to do here is head on down, kind of to a, maybe a lower level of the nether, like maybe over there, you can see a little bit of uh, magma brick. If we take some of that back through, we can then melt that down, pull it out over gravel. That's going to allow us to make quite a large number of scorched stone. Then we can craft that scorched stone up into scorched brick in whichever form we want. I believe we can also, if we want, run it through a, a stone cutter to change it into whatever form we want as well. And then once we have enough scorched brick, we can then also craft up the foundry controller, which is not too difficult either. It's one molten obsidian pulled over a scorched brick. And from there, we should be able to set up a fairly large foundry, which is going to allow us to pump all of our raw metals in, melt them all down, and pull them all out in ingot form. And as I showed in the last episode, while this doesn't actually double the number of resources that we get, it does give us additional bonus resources that we wouldn't have otherwise got in the smeltery or in the dissolver and combiner. So with iron, for example, you get one iron ingot, but you also get a third of an ingot worth of nickel as well. So real quick, before we start scavenging around to try and find magma blocks, one thing that I would like to do uh, right at the start of today's stream is get ourselves a, a different tool. Specifically, I would like to get this guy, the Matic, because the Matic is kind of a two-in-one tool. It works well as both an axe and a shovel, and it's really not too difficult to make. It requires an axe head, it requires a round plate, and it requires a tool handle. Between streams, I have gathered a tiny bit more cobalt from the nether, and so if we quickly throw that into here, that should work out just fine. Uh, temporarily, I am going to uh, take out the extraction and insertion fluid cards there, just because I don't want, again, the wrong things being taken out at the wrong time. We'll throw in some gold. I think we only need one, actually. That should be fine. And then what we'll probably do here is we'll get ourselves a cobblestone axe head, which is going to require a tiny bit more cobblestone, but that is fine. And I think we'll also get a cobblestone round plate. And I think we're going to use both of those to make cobalt versions. Yeah, we've got six ingots of cobalt. So actually, let's put that second gold in. Let's pull the molten gold down and we'll make a, uh, a gold axe cast. And we'll also make a gold round plate cast. And then we'll fill both of those in with cobalt. And then for now, I think we can just stick with the regular old oak 
tool handle. I think that's going to be just fine for the time being. And of course, we can always improve it in the future if that is something uh, that we want to do. That is not what I want to do, Isaac. I wanted to do this. Let's just go ahead and drop that into our trash can slot, which seems to have disappeared. That's fine. We can use this one up here. Not quite sure where that one managed to go. But either way, the gold is on the bottom. So let's go ahead and set the east side there to extract. And we'll set the downside to insert. That is my bad. The card that I put in there at the bottom is the uh, item extract card. I need to put in the fluid insert card like that, and that's going to pull that down where it needs to be. Then again, we're going to take that out temporarily because we don't want to accidentally make a golden X head. So instead, we'll take that out. We'll put this in. We'll put the fluid card back in. That's going to make us the right cast, and then we can leave that on because then it's going to make us the cobalt round head. Once that's done, we can take that out, put in the small X head. And boom, nice. So if we take all of those over to the Tinker Station, we can go boom, boom, and boom. And that gets us a Cobalt Matic, which is not only going to allow us to cut down things like wood faster, but it should also allow us to uh, to dig up a large amount of dirt faster as well. If we give it a quick test over in here, it should be much faster than our basic hands at breaking the, uh, the dirt there, which is fantastic. Much like our other tool, I feel like we might as well go ahead and drop a diamond on there. The diamond is just a good overall upgrade to the Matic. Boom and boom. And yeah, let's go see if we can't get a decent number of magma blocks. All right, and a little while later, we have just over two stacks of magma blocks. It actually turns out that we have quite a large amount of magma blocks fairly close to us in the nether. And so uh, this should allow us to get, I believe, like double the number of foundry bricks. One magma block gets you four slime balls and it only takes two slime balls to actually make the one scotched stone. So we can actually get uh, almost four stacks of scotched brick here, which is going to allow us to make a fairly decent sized foundry. So in order to get this to work, we are going to need some silicon dioxide, which thankfully we have in fairly large quantities. And of course we can get more of very easily using our uh, cobblestone here through the old dissolver. And I think the only other thing that we really need to be considerate of is the, uh, the one block of obsidian there. Currently we have no obsidian. And so I think real quick, I am gonna head back through to the nether and do one more round of the old nether portal breaking technique. But then from there, we should just be able to drop all of our magma blocks into the smeltery, pull them all out one by one over gravel. And I might even go ahead and throw down a second casting basin, because right now I imagine it's going to be fairly slow. If we go ahead and dump a lot of these in, pulling the gravel out one by one with just one casting basin, I think is going to take us longer than I would like. However, if we set up multiple casting basins, we can probably make this happen quite quickly. And you can have more than one seared drain in the smeltery. So for example, we could put three seared drains along here and then have one, two, three, even four, five casting basins all pulling out simultaneously, effectively allowing us to make five scorched stone at the same time. Okay, so a little while later, I've added down two more drains and I've moved our first seared drain from here over to the side here. And I've placed down a few more casting basins with the grout that we made earlier. And basically, all I've been doing is dropping the gravel in like this and then pulling the magma blocks over like that. That gets us these guys right here, the scorched stone. And currently, if we grab the stone cutter, in fact, we did get a stone cutter on a stick right at the start of the mod pack, we should be able to turn our scorched stone here into scorched bricks. It's a little annoying that I don't think we can turn them into scorched road. You can use the scorched road for the smeltery and off of the foundry, I should say. And you can also use the scorched ladder for the foundry as well, which is a pretty nifty idea because the ladder here is able to be part of the foundry and it's also climbable. Because one problem that we do run into if we try and make our smeltery taller here is that as we go further and further up, we have to start building alongside it to get up to the point where we can build the smeltery taller. The foundry kind of gets around this by having this guy, the ladder available that you can build into the foundry itself, thus allowing you to very easily climb to the top of the foundry. Uh, unfortunately, the ladder has like the pattern of the road, but the road's more expensive to make than the brick. So I think we'll probably end up using the brick for our design, but then having like a little bit of, uh, of ladder on the back. I think it's gonna look fine, just not, uh, not ideal. Either way, 
Once we have at least one scorched brick, we can throw that into its own casting basin, make sure that this one block of obsidian that I put in earlier is ready to be pulled over. And once that cools, and while we wait for that to cool, I am gonna clear out my inventory just a little bit, but uh, once that cools, we should have a controller. Nice. I think I am probably almost certainly gonna move the smeltery because again, I do want to have the foundry as close as possible to our storage door system so that we don't have to do a super long uh, array of laser connectors to get all of our finalized ingots through and into our storage system. And so I am temporarily going to uh, tear the smeltery down and put the foundry right about here. So the foundry is a little different to the smeltery. With the smeltery, you can build like the three by three interior, and then you can build the walls on the side. So uh, if we go ahead and start putting this down, let's do it, yeah, let's do it here. Normally with the smeltery, we could do something like this, and then we could start building the walls here. Unfortunately with the foundry, that is not how it works. With the foundry, you have to have a fully solid base. And so if we want to have a three by three interior, the exact same size interior that we had with our smeltery, we actually have to put down a, a solid five by five base like this with walls all around it like this. And again, we can get rid of this guy here and we can put our foundry controller right about there. Nice. Uh, just to show you real quick, if I were to go ahead and get rid of this, the foundry breaks. It's no longer accessible as a multi-block, and it even shows the red block there, letting us know that we're missing a brick. You don't have to craft it into brick. You can use the scorched stone, as shown here. I just think the bricks look a little bit nicer, and given that it's basically free to transfer the stone into brick, I figured we might as well. So now we do have this foundry available. The UI, as you can tell, is extremely similar to that of the smeltery because, again, it is basically just a smeltery that doesn't alloy. Now, we can, if we want, try and make this look a little nicer than the standard smeltery that we had before. We can do that using the, uh, the foundry glass, that being uh, this stuff right here, the scorched glass. We can use scorched glass instead of scorched brick to allow us to see into our foundry. And so what I'm thinking I might do here is kind of keep the edges bricked like this, and maybe go, you know, three tall or something, maybe even taller, but then fill in the walls with scorched glass. Now, the scorched glass is fairly easy to make. Um, I was under the impression initially that it was going to require some kind of glass. It doesn't. You can do this in two ways. You can either craft the scorched brick with quartz, or you can pull molten quartz over pre-existing scorched brick. And this is the method that I think we're probably gonna go with because we already have the brick. And of course we have what it takes to rebuild a smeltery. The only thing that we're a little light on is nether quartz, but again, we do have easy access to the nether. And so should be able to very quickly head on through and get ourselves a fairly decent amount of nether quartz to allow us to make a fairly decent amount of scorched glass. I should also point out with the smeltering that I'm putting down right next to the foundry here, while you don't need the edges of the smeltery, you can put them here if you want to make it look the same as the foundry, which I think we might do just for, for continuity here. And we can do the exact same thing with the smeltery. If we get rid of these bricks here uh, and type in seared instead of uh, foundry, you can put seared glass into this as well, which again is just seared brick and glass. And I think I might try do that as well. Again, just for kind of continuity between the two multi-blocks. So I've reset up the smeltery here. It looks a little janky at the minute because half of it is uh, seared brick and half of it is seared glass. I've started making more seared glass. We're going to replace most of the, the seared brick with seared glass, much like with the foundry. I kind of want these to look almost identical where we're going to have just the seared brick in the corner. Again, for now, there's no seared brick in this corner because I needed to use the, uh, the casting basin here like that. But the idea is that we're going to take the seared glass and thankfully this does have a connected texture. Uh, sorry, not the seared glass. We're going to take the scorched glass and this does have a connected texture so that when you do this it's going to give us a nice insight into the molten liquids that are being held inside of uh, of the foundry so these are well on their way here we do still need some more uh, seared glass for the back of the smeltery and i think for the time being what i might do as well is i might do something like this just to top off our current foundry obviously in the future we might look at making the foundry taller but we can always replace some of the scotch brick here with more scotch glass if we want to make it taller in the future. But for now, this is looking quite nice. I might even move it up by one, honestly. I don't think, I'm pretty sure you can't put the foundry controller in the, the edge like that. 
No, that would have been nice. The only thing that we're missing right now in order to actually get this working is a tank, the scorched fuel tank. Now, unfortunately, it does appear that the scorched fuel tank does require actual scorched brick. And so we are going to have to smelt up eight nether grout, which means we're going to have to get at least four magma creams. So it turns out, actually, we don't need to do this. Um, you can put the foundry controller in the floor. This does work. Uh, Chaz pointed out it did form. I'm just blind. And also... In other good news, we can make scorched brick here using um, a casting table. So we just need flint and we can pour the magma over a piece of flint and that will get a scorched brick, which is perfectly fine. And we can craft up the flint from gravel, which is also very nice indeed. So let's quickly grab some magma blocks here. Let's throw those into the smell tree, which is slightly smaller at the moment. Again, that's just because we don't have uh, these three blocks on the back like so. And then if we throw down our casting table that we made earlier, we'll put that down over on this side. I have put the drains on the left and right of the smell tray, just because I think the front is going to look nicer with an all glass appearance. It lets us look straight into the smell tree and see what's going on. Uh, but over here, we can put back down our faucet and then we can do this and this, and that should get us the seared brick. And once we have eight scorched brick, the only thing we're missing is some glass, at which point we can go boom and boom nether quartz of course for some reason the foundry whenever you think it needs glass it actually needs nether quartz boom there we go uh, for now we'll throw this in at the back and i think as i mentioned earlier i would also like to get a ladder going with this as well so the ladder does require more scorched brick and some more scorched brick so you do get four at a time so we actually only need four more of these uh, scorched brick here at which point we should have everything we need to craft up some scorched ladder. Nice. And for now, I think I'm going to throw that in along the back of the foundry here. So if we just do one, two, three, and four, now we have a nice easy way of climbing up to the top if we want to uh, expand out and build this taller in the future. And for symmetry's sake, on the back there, I think I will probably end up putting another scorched fuel tank right here. Um, and then we'll just fill both of those up with lava you can have as many fuel tanks as you want in again just to make it nice and symmetrical and then from there we could actually we could even put something else there actually because i'm pretty sure that we also need to have a um a scorched drain in order to pull out the final products but we might also require a scorched chute this is going to allow us to pump items into the foundry so for this we need four more scorched brick with two obsidian pins which we can make by pulling molten obsidian out in the casting table, not the casting basin. So again, thankfully, we do have obsidian lying around. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. And just as soon as that's melted, we can pull that out. While we wait for that, let's go ahead and make a few more of the, uh, the scorched brick. And then in terms of getting the resources from the mining dimension back through to the overworld, I mentioned ender chests before. And while it is possible for us to craft ender chests, we don't currently have the means to do that. We don't have uh, the blaze rods, and we also don't have the ender pouch here, which again, we could try and make, like this is technically possible, but looking through the quest book between streams, the shop does contain ender chests at a cost of 32 cryptocurrency. Now, I do kind of want to save my cryptocurrency for the angel ring here, but the angel ring is 150. And the, uh, the amount of cryptocurrency we've been getting has kind of uh, slowed down a fair bit. And quite a few of the quests that we're going to be doing uh, as we progress forward here don't necessarily give cryptocurrency. And so I think what I might do is I might splurge 64 of our current 69 cryptocurrency on two ender chests. Uh, and then I think what we'll try and do is we'll try and make our way over towards Dumaticraft sooner rather than later to see if we can start making our own cryptocurrency. Uh, thus allowing us to really just buy whatever it is we want from the in-game shop. For now, though, let's go and pull two obsidian down. That gets us the chute, which for now we'll put in, I think, right about here. Like that. And then we'll make ourselves a drain for the other side, which again is the exact same recipe, but just with the obsidian plates in different positions. And boom. Let's go ahead and put that in on the opposite side. That's right about here, like that. Let's go ahead and purchase those ender chests here. So we'll grab two of these. Uh, it does specify, please have the exact amount in your inventory to avoid any excess being deleted. So let's temporarily do this and buy the ender chest. And then let's do the same again and buy another ender chest. Perfect. So I think what we'll do is we'll have one of those 
here, like this. Um, I think you can get these to place down pointing upwards if you do something like that. Yeah, that's what I want. I think that looks a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer. So uh, you can change the frequency on these. There are two things you can do, I believe, to, uh, to kind of lock ender chests to you as a player. The first one is you can change the frequency. Right now, this is set to white, white, white. You'll see the three bands on the ender chest there denoting the frequency. Um, you can use dye to change that frequency. So uh, if I was to grab some lapis and change this into blue dye, if we grab, let's say, six lapis, we can right click here on the bands and change this, maybe shift right click. Yeah, it's a blue, blue, blue. Uh, so now if you put something in here and we look in this over here, it's not there. But if we were to get three more blue dye and put this on over here, now we can see that uh, that blue dye, these chests are linked. And the one extra step you can do is you can grab a diamond. And I believe if you shift right click a diamond on there, that's going to link it to you as a player. So now, even if somebody else on the server were to try and use the blue, blue, blue frequency, they wouldn't get this stuff because in the top left there, you can see it says gaming on caffeine could blue, blue, blue. So only I can access this frequency. And in fact, without getting another ender chest, I did just lose four blue die, but that's fine. What we can do now is we can take this. And if we head on over into the mining dimension, we can slap this ender chest down on top of the builder and all future ores that we get should go directly through into the ender chest and be accessible in the overworld. And unlike a vanilla ender chest, you can insert into and pull out of the ender chests from the ender chests mod. The one downside, of course, is that the ender chest is quite small. I do believe you can make the ender chest bigger. If I'm not mistaken, I think you can right click eyes of ender potentially onto this ender chest to make it bigger. I could be thinking of a different mod, but I think that's how that works. Um, for now, it shouldn't be too much of a problem because our things are up because our ores are not coming in that quickly. But going forward, it is definitely something we might have to consider if the builder gets faster than our foundry can take care of things. But at that point, we could also just look at making our foundry faster as well. Now, one thing that a lot of people have suggested in the YouTube comments and in the Twitch chat is uh, replacing this uh, hopper system with a bonsai pot, which I think is a fantastic idea. The idea here is that the bonsai pot in this version only produces smeltable resources. So uh, if we press U on the sampling here to look at how it works in a bonsai pot, it used to be that by default, you would get things like apples here. And of course, apples can't be smelted. And so if you just tried putting a bonsai pot on top of a generator, it would get clogged up with apples and it wouldn't work. But in this new version of bonsai pots, it only produces logs, sticks, and saplings by default, all three of which can be burned in a generator. And it doesn't produce the, the leaves or the apples unless you add specific upgrades like the silk touch upgrade or like the beehive upgrade. And so if we just get three bricks from three clay, which I'm going to assume we don't have either of them, never mind, we do have the bricks, boom, we can take this, we can take another regular Minecraft X. And also, of course, some dirt. And a sapling. We don't have any dirt, but we can, of course, grab dirt from our trusty dirt source over in the mining dimension. Let's quickly grab just one piece down here. And so now what we can do is we can drop the botany pot on top, or sorry, the bonsai pot on top like this. We can then right click the dirt, right click the sapling. And if we go ahead and drop in the ax and the hopper, this should automatically feed down all of the sticks, logs, and saplings that are generated by the bonsai pot into the Inval generator here, thus providing an infinite source of power for the RF tools builder. Now, it might not be fast enough. I'm not too sure. I don't think the bonsai pot is going to start to back up on resources, even though it is backing up currently. I have a feeling the generator is going to burn through things faster than the bonsai pot can produce them, but this is better than the system we had because now the builder is able to constantly work as opposed to only working when we put our resources in manually. Back over here, what we need to do now is we need to get some more of the uh, scorched brick because again, if we're gonna get the foundry to actually work, we need uh, a casting table uh, and or a basin so that we can pull the ingots out either in block form or in ingot form. And then of course, pull them around into the draw controller. And we also need a nerd to pull the raw ores into the chute. Now, one thing I think we can do here that might work quite nicely is we can use an item extract card. Currently our item card is in sensor mode, but we'll change that to insert. We do need another item card if we're gonna set that to extract. 
Uh, it looks like we are just missing gold nuggets. That is fine, along with maybe a lapis. We are missing a lapis. Did I put all my lapis back in the uh, in the mining dimension? Is it all in here? It might be. We don't have two. Oh yeah, but well, there it is. Got an extra stack. I was gonna say I thought we had more than seventeen lapis available to us. Uh, if we get another item card, what we should be able to do here is put an item extract card in the top slot, like that. And then we're going to put an item insert card into the slot facing the chute. But what we should be able to do is if we go to at laser IO, we should be able to get a, um, a tag filter. Okay, so I quickly crafted up some more logic chips. That gets us four basic filters. Let's go see if we can't craft that up into a tag filter. We totally can. And the benefit of the tag filter here, if we right click on it, is that we can tell the node here to only insert things that can be smelted into ingots into the chute so if we and, and the really cool thing here is that if we take a piece of raw metal we can actually just put that into the tag filter here and it will show us all of the tags associated with that item um, i think i did show it before but if you press f3 and h at the same time you'll turn on advanced tooltips at which point you can hover over anything and it will tell you the tags associated with it uh, the thing that we are after here is forge colon raw materials if it's a forge raw material and i think down here in jei if you type in dollar sign raw materials it will come up with all of the raw materials available to it and so basically what we can do is we can add a filter that tells the node to only put these items here and these items only into the foundry all we have to do is take something that has that tag put it in here click on for raw materials click add and that's going to add that to the filter now if we take that out the tag is still there and if we go over to our laser node if we check which way we're facing, we're currently facing south. So let's go ahead and south side. We're going to set this to insert. But before we do that, let's go ahead and actually right click here. Let's put in the filter card and let's set that to insert. It doesn't matter where it inserts. That's fine. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Uh, we'll make sure that it is in the south side like so. And if that is set up correctly, Again, if the item card is set to extract, which it is, uh, and if this is set to insert correctly to the south, which I think is, is right. Let me check. Does this open the north side? It does. If that's set up to insert correctly, that should only extract and insert items that have the all tag. And there we go. It's working. I did have the, uh, the channel set wrong. Uh, I was showing off the channels beforehand, and this one was set to orange and not white, but... As you can see there, it is pulling in the copper. It's not going to pull in things like the Vintium ore here that we have. Um, it also shouldn't pull in the Uranonite here from power either. It should only pull in the things that can be smelted. And so now all we have to do is, of course, feed this guy with some lava, which again, we can do by switching this into bucket mode and just dumping some in like so. Now, all we have to do is get ourselves another faucet over here, along with a casting table or a casting basin. I think we might go for a casting basin. I think the casting basin is going to be quicker in the long run. And I think what we might do as well is we might switch our ingot drawers from regular drawers to compacting drawers. The benefit of using a compacting drawer for ingots is that it allows us to access the ingots in nuggets, ingot, and block form all at the same time. So real quick here, if we make a regular compacting draw, boom and boom, I am then going to upgrade that to a framed compacting draw, which is then, just like before, going to allow us to use simulation blocks uh, to color this however we like, just as soon as that quest fades away. There it is, black and white, like so. So basically what we can do here, if we uh, move the copper draw away let's put that down here for now we can put down the framed compacting drawer like so and then from here if we uh, unlock this drawer we can take our copper place that in here and that's going to make the copper available not in there if we place it in here okay so sometimes it's a little janky let me craft up some copper nuggets and let me put the copper nuggets in there there we go this is what we want we want apparently there's like a double compressed copper block that you can make yeah, the Compressium mod here adds double compressed, triple compressed, com quadruple compressed copper blocks, which is not what we're after. Um, so sometimes you might have to craft the nugget first, but if we lock this like that, now if we put our ingots in, we can access them in block form, nugget form, or ingot form. Uh, and especially if we check our system here and we type in copper, we can now just take them out in nugget, ingot, or block form without having to manually craft them into nugget, ingot, or block form. 
Uh, the same is also true with things like redstone and lapis. You can have those in both block form and in regular dust form at the same time, which is super useful for crafting. And of course, here it means that uh, if we put a casting basin here, we can pull the entire block out of the casting basin and over into our laser node. And you can see here already that we have a plethora of molten resources available in the foundry, and none of them are melting together because alloys cannot be created inside of the foundry, which is fantastic. So real quick, let's grab some more flint and let's see if we can't get a, um, a casting basin down on the foundry. And boom, that gets us a scorched casting basin, which we're gonna put down right about here. And then we're also gonna set up the exact same system we had before with the laser node to specifically only pull out molten ingots if we have enough to create a full block. So in this case, our fluid card is gonna be set to extract. We're gonna have exact on. Uh, the, if it's got crossed through, it's not on. If it's not crossed through, it is on. Uh, in this case, let's look at a block of iron. A block of iron, I think is gonna require 810. Yeah, 810 millibuckets of molten iron. So this time we're just gonna change this number here. If we shift, we can go up in tens. If we control, we can go up in hundreds. Let's go up to 800 and then we can go down to 810 like so. And so now it's only gonna pull out a molten liquid if there are 810 millibuckets of it. So we can go ahead and set the insert here on, oh sorry, the extract on north and the insert on down like that, at which point we should potentially see if uh, both of those are on the right channel, which I think they are white and white, they are. So extract 810. Okay, so for whatever reason, the scorched casting basin didn't work here, but the regular seared casting basin does work here. That is very bizarre, but thank you to the Twitch chat for uh, for pointing that out as being a, a potential bug, maybe. I don't know, maybe that's how it's supposed to work. I'm not too sure. But uh, now all we need to do is get an item card and connect these nodes up, right? So I think we are probably one, two, three, four, five, six. We might be close enough, actually. I think these have a, an eight block radius by default. We are totally close enough to connect those up, which is fantastic. And so all we need now is an item card. We can use that and set it to extract. We're gonna extract from down. That's over here. We're gonna set that to down and extract. That's gonna go ahead and hopefully pull the copper out. And then over here, did we have a, a card set to insert? We totally did. And so I would hope that the copper here, if it's not the wrong copper, should get sent over. It's not. So it should get sent over and, and inserted, I think, into the, uh, the draw there. Let me just quickly check that none of these are set incorrectly. Again, the channel is wrong here, which is why that didn't work. I thought I just made that card. I don't know why it defaulted to channel one and not channel zero, but either way that did work. It took the copper block out. And so we should slowly but surely see all of our copper here taken through into the uh, the storage drawer. Now, one thing that could put a, a pretty big dent into all of our plans here, people are asking if it will only pull out the bottom resource. I don't know if it will only pull out the bottom resource. That could be a problem if it does, because basically that's gonna mean that after five blocks here, the rest of this doesn't get pulled out. I guess we'll find out in a second. We do have two blocks of gold and a block of lead as well. So we'll see if when it's done with the four blocks of copper, does it then move on to the gold and the lead or does it just kind of stop and wait until it has more copper? Hey, it works as intended, nice. So even though we do still have copper at the bottom here, it noted that we did have a block of gold and it's pulled the block of gold down into the uh, the basin there. So this does indeed work as intended, which is fantastic. And I have not wasted my time. This does work and is gonna work for processing all of our resources through and into our storage drawer wall. Uh, now really all we have to do is set up another filter to pull all of these items round into, um, into the, the storage drawer wall. So we need to have those automatically run through into there. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think if we put a laser node here, we should be able to do something like this and like this. You have to shift right click one, right click the other. I was shift right clicking both there, which is uh, the mistake I made. And then if we do this as well, that connects both of those up, fantastic. So right now we have our tag filter here. And if we right click on it, we have the forge raw materials tag, but we have it set to allow. So what we can do here is we can do the exact same thing if we make another item card, which does require yet more nuggets. Again, if we had our gold in a compacting drawer, we wouldn't have to craft those nuggets manually because the system would be able to access them in their nugget form. But we can take the item card here. We're going to put that in this side of the node, the west side, and we're going to get another tag filter. 
and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add the forged or tag to our materials add, but this time we're going to set it to disallow or to deny. So now if we take our item card, put this in, set it to extract and put that in this side, that should extract everything from here that doesn't have the raw ores tag and that also has a space over here. So if we take some of our dimensional shards and we put that in like that, those dimensional shards are being pulled out and sent round over to the draw controller. Again, we can set the uh, extraction there to eight, which is the max. And we just need to make sure that we have uh, a slot for all of this stuff to go into. So the experience orbs and the uranonite. We are almost certainly going to need more draws as we get more things coming through. There's just like a bunch of stuff like Soda Squats Dust and these gobba gl glob globets. <laughs> that we also have, but uh, everything else should make its way down uh, into here if it can. Um, I do notice those are not, that could just be due to the fact that we are actually out of lava here, which is uh, is unfortunate. Uh, that lava was burned through incredibly quickly, although I guess we have melted quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of stuff. I do have an idea of how I want to automate the production of lava, um, but the way that I want to do it might be a bit impractical this early on, so we might have to think of something uh, that's a bit more early game friendly. But unfortunately, chat, we are out of time for this episode of Encrypted. <laughs>